All right, hello class. So this video is going to focus on the sum and difference identities. We're actually not gonna go over too many examples of using them necessarily, except for deriving them from each other. All right, so here they are. I know it looks kind of like a mess at first. Um, the more standard way that people tend to write it is this. Um, just in my class, I tend to write these because there are reasons, but basically, um, alpha and beta, sometimes people like to call them fish and B or something like that. So I'm just like, I'm going to forego that, but still expose you to that here so that you can actually see it anyway. So let's look at this. You don't have to memorize these. I memorize one of them. This is the one that I memorize, and I'm going to show you how you can memorize that one only and get all of them. Also, if you kind of memorize them like this, that helps because then you kind of reduce the number of things you memorize. Because notice there are similarities between these two and between these two. Just look at what the difference is. All right. Like I said, I'm going to take this one for granted specifically this one. So let's use that to prove the others. If cosine of a plus b equals cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle, then we can do that here. Cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Oh, whoops, forgot to write this here. A plus a minus b is the same as a plus negative b, right? So first angle is a, second angle is negative b. So we can use that directly. Cosine of negative b is equal to cosine of b. So we just get cosine a times cosine of b, like that. Sine of negative b, though, equals negative sine of b. Because sine is an odd function, cosine is an even function. So this negative is going to multiply with that minus in the front, then we just get plus sine of a times sine of b. And this is the fourth identity. All right. Next one is going to be a little trickier. So remember that sine of theta is the same thing as cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. So this theta is a plus b. So this is the same thing as cosine of pi over 2 minus a plus b. Another nicer way to look at it is that. I know it looks weird at first, but it'll start to make sense as we just work with it. So I'm going to color code those. All right, so we're going to have cosine of the first angle, which is pi over 2 minus a, times cosine of the second angle, which is negative b. And then since that's plus in there, we have minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. All right. So cosine of pi over 2 minus a is going to be sine of a. Cosine of negative b is just cosine of b. So here we have that negative b already, so I'm going to just make that to be a plus. And then sine of uh, pi over 2 minus a is going to be cosine of a, and then sine of negative b is negative sine of b. We already applied the negative in the front. So here is the first identity. All right. Now we have, I'm just going to put that up here. All 
we have this, so we're going to use this directly to get the last one here. So this is sine of a plus negative b. All right, so that means we have sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. We've already used the sine negative b thing a lot, so I'm pretty sure by now you can tell um, that that's going to go to a minus. And we have this. So with that, we have proven the third, uh, second identity. So we got the first one, the second one. We took the third one for granted, and we used the third one to get the fourth one. So if you understand this, you'll be able to easily get all of them. Um, you could technically use this thing over here, but it's just going to make things a little bit longer, a little bit more complicated, because you're going to have to just apply cosine of that thing again. But aside from that, um, this is how you can use them. There's just one way to use them. You'll see another application in the next video when we do double angle. You might be able to see where this is going already anyway. All right, so that's it for now. Um, double angle, half angle, power reduction, those are the last three we have in the next two videos.